I'll sort of keep clicking it. So finally, uh, we are doing a full day of eating. I know it's been long awaited, and a lot of you have been asking to see what my diet is on a training day. So this is that video, and uh, I think it's now a good time to do it because we are like deeply into the off season now. It's not like we're still in that post show phase anymore. We're almost three months into the off season, and body weight is now at 86 kilos this morning, which is roughly. Uh, 14 kilograms above my Olympia stage weight so a good amount of body weight being gained now and just feeling like I'm growing a lot which is good which is what you want uh, at this point in the off season you know you should be responding really well and yeah seeing, seeing training move in a really good fashion cool oh. posing in the off season is not as fun it's so hot in here fuck Nice. That's nice. Alright. Let's eat some food. <laughs> so, in terms of food, you'll see today that food has been kind of stable for a long time now. And the reason being is because, and I've probably explained this before on YouTube, is post show you want to recover fast, you want to gain some immediate weight pretty quickly, so you're out of that like prep hole and you're in a good spot to then train hard again. We've kind of surpassed that now, and I'm feeling really good, like I said. So now, the goal is to see body weight move as steadily as possible. You know, you can't force performance on like crazy. You don't want to just throw loads of food, expecting to see performance just fly up continuously. It will steady off, and you need to be realistic, and kind of be realistic with your food as well. So, I'm keeping my food where it is, allowing body weight to climb at a nice steady pace now, because that's all I need at this point. And because body weight is moving steadily now, what it means is I can stay in this phase for a really long time because that's the key to adding a lot of muscle is just being in this phase for a long time. So you'll see where my food is right now, it's high, but it's not like crazy high yet. There'll be a point probably in a few weeks or I suspect maybe three weeks where food will be increased because it's um, with things are already starting to steady off. However, that increase again will just be a small jump. So it's not like it's gonna change much to the diet at all. It will just be like an extra bit of rice or whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys what I eat on my training day. We have push today at the coach as well, so I'll show you some clips from that as well. But yeah, let's get into the video, I'm starving. I've, as you've seen, I just done my check-in for AJ, my, my, video, my photos, I'll send that across. I'll do my update to him as well very shortly, and I'll get my first meal in right now. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. So this is my, my morning routine on my training day. I always start by drinking like two liters of water pretty immediately. It's really important to have a good amount of hydration going into your session. And I feel like if I, so what I always try and do is have four liters before I train at like half 12-ish. If I don't do that and I go under, I do notice it different with my performance. I've kind of adapted to that level of fluid, so that's how much I need. You might not have to drink like four liters before you train, but definitely a good amount of fluid that you're kind of used to to always keep consistent before every session. It's really important. So what I do is I'll drink this, but I'll also take uh, like my health supplements. This is really good for travel because it has all the things put in like a little bag. So you can just, if you're going out and about and you don't want to take loads of supplements with you, this will sort you out. I don't know why I'm taking it right now, it's the only thing I have, but it's vitamin D, vitamin C, greens, um, yeah, all the good stuff, omega-3. So yeah, I always make sure to have vitamin C, vitamin D3 with K2, make sure you supplement it with K2 because Without it, too much high vitamin D without K2 can see calcification uh, of, of your joints, which is not what you want. So the second thing I do is I will have this, which is glutathione, which is the strongest antioxidant your body can produce. It's so good for preventing you from getting ill. So I just do one scoop when I'm not ill, and then if I am ill, I might actually do two. Uh, so I'll just mix that in here, and then I'll also put creatine, so that's roughly 5 grams. It tastes really good as well, the goose farm, it's like lemonade, really nice. <laughs> Alright, so, meal one. The reason I'm doing this, is like taking out the fridge, is because 
I find if I'm waking up and then I have to prepare meal one, it just extends my day and I've got to get to clients and start working. So I've already cooked cream rice and I've just refrigerated it. So there's 100 grams of cream rice in here. And then I'll add, um, add protein as well. So 150 grams of berries and then 20 grams of dark chocolate. That's gone. So 50 grams of whey in here as well as a shake. So I don't like to have whey with my cream of rice. You can do, it's, it will volumize it quite a lot. It will work, but I like to have cream of rice on its own. I just like the taste of it. Uh, so yeah, this is meal one, which is off the top of my head around 90 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fat, and then 40 grams of protein. So yeah, let's eat. So it's a bit cold, but it saves me, saves, saves me cooking in the morning. Uh, so yeah, maple syrup, cream rice, really nice. So, yeah, so pre-workout meal, 100 grams of white rice, uh, 50 grams of greens, 200 grams of chicken, 25 grams of nut butter, two grams of salt. So this is the perfect thing about having an air fryer. Uh, that's now cooking, I can just do my work or watch my check-in from AJ, which I'm doing. Um, so if I was frying chicken, I'd have to be stood there. And it just, so I can now kill some time and do something else. And also, yeah, I don't know if you realize, but we're in a different place. So we moved, in, moved into a new house, uh, which is really nice. And yeah, a lot more space. So I'm really liking being here. New check-in spot, new place, which is, yeah, really, really good. So uh, it's a lot more space for this one. So, it's a lot easier. <laughs> so, two grams of salt. I'm always making sure I have a good amount, amount of sodium before I, I train. And just keep it standardized, like the same with fluid. So, two grams of salt. So, I add 25 grams of peanut butter. This is the, the it drizzles. So, it's the golden, roast, golden roasted peanut butter. You can just drizzle it on top. It's so good. Especially with sriracha and like chipotle sauce, really low cal sauces. It is literally like my favorite meal. It's 25 grams of that. So this on top. And this as well. So this is roughly 80 grams of carbs, uh, 60 grams of protein around that and then uh, like three grams of fat, so, oh no, without the peanut butter, and the peanut butter on top, so 13 grams of fat. So, yeah, this is my pre workout meal before I train every single day. It digests really well. I love to have rice because I find it's the easiest digesting carb to have pre workout. And yeah, then I just add some added fats that digest really, digest really nicely as well, so nut butter. It's very low volume, really enjoyable meal that isn't going to make you feel sick on a train and it'll go down easily. So yeah, the perfect pre-workout meal, funny enough, chicken and rice. <laughs> it's a barbecue season with the peanut butter. A bit of sriracha, you can't go wrong. Favorite meal, so good. So intro workout. So I'm heading to the gym, that's for train push. I've got my EAs, so this is one serving of this. Candy, apple ranch is really good. Anova Farm do definitely do the best tasting the EAs, I've decided, they're so good. So just one serving of this, and then 25 carbs of Psychic Dextrin, which I do not have with me right now, I have to buy at the gym, stupidly. I ordered some, but it hasn't arrived yet. So, yeah, I'm going to do this. I took the creatine this morning, so I'll do that morning now. Uh, so that's just my intro workout. 25 carbs, 15 grams of EAs, and yeah, then we'll head to the gym. And then also, pre-workout. I'm doing. This is Karma by Clout Nutrition. So this is a nootropic pre. You can get this from Elite Subs. You can get this from Elite Subs. All this stuff is on Elite Subs. Using my code PAL10. This is a nootropic pre that is basically really good if you don't want high stims. So this is very focused. 
and it just it's good because high stims can make you feel quite sick. So if you want to do this, it's a little less. It's like 270 milligrams of caffeine compared to the king of pre's, but very very strong every pre, which is very high stims. This is a lot less, a bit more focus based, which is a bit more appropriate for something like a push day where I don't want like really high caffeine anyway. So one scoop is 270 milligrams of caffeine. So I'm gonna do like a little less than that. Yeah. And then also I'm going to do Vascumax, which is definitely an unbelievable pump product. The pumps I get from this are so good. So Vascumax Pro. Also I'm doing a lot of water with this. Why? Because it's the same point about hydration. I want to be really hydrated going into the session. So quite a lot of fluid. It will help with the pump. Don't take a pump product and dry scoop it. You need fluid to get a good pump. So yeah, let's go to the gym. So about to head to the gym. The drive is a little bit longer now uh, because we moved. I'm like 30 minutes away from the gym. But I always love the pre-workout drive. If you love training and you're excited to train, the pre-workout drive is always very exciting. You get in the mood. You put some music on, a little bit of drum and bass on, and yeah, you just get in the zone to like switch on in the gym. Like obviously, that pre-workout ritual you have and that routine, it's good to like just get you in that mood to train, as opposed to like when I was in. Do you remember when there was a lockdown and COVID was a thing? I mean, it's still a thing, but not as much. But <laughs> yeah, when we used to train at home, I remember like I'd be like not training, and then I'd just walk into the gym immediately. You know what I mean? And there was no pre-workout sort of time for me to go oh, I'm gonna train I'm gonna train I'm gonna train and it made me feel like not really in the zone when I started warming up so I always never take it for granted that pre-workout sort of drive or whatever it is like it, it's exciting for me I like it I enjoy that drive the drive back not so much but the 30 minute drive to the gym is a lot of fun so anyway enough of me rambling I actually need to get to the gym because Charlie's gonna be waiting for me <laughs> uh, but yeah let's train push session finally took some good progressions on there after a long time of like stalling on the high incline I finally went up a rep and took seven reps so I was very happy about that um, the truth is on on movements when you run them for a long time you're not, you're not going to see crazy jumps all the time but you need to be persistent and you need to keep going don't just ex 
don't just think, oh, it's stalled for two weeks, I'm going to throw it out and do something else. That's where those progressions actually really mean something and mean that you're adding muscle tissue. They just come a little slower. So, yeah, that's the secret there. But anyway, post workout meal, uh, we're going to do a pretty big meal. Uh, the most carbs, I think, of the day makes sense. So, obviously, I've repl um, I need to replenish glycogen stores. Uh, obviously, you've got some time to do this. It's not like people talk about the anabolic window, you need to like immediately eat your protein shake and have cereal straight after the gym. It's not that important. As long as you have it within you know an hour to an hour and a half, you're fine. But that's what we're going to do now. So, scale. This is, I like this because it's so easy to make. So, a hundred and fifty grams of Coca Pops. So I love rice based cereal is so good because it digests so easily. In the off season, I think this by far is the perfect post workout meal. Instead of like chicken and rice or cream of rice, it's a lot easier to get down. Just mix a protein shake with it and yeah, it's, a, it's really nice because obviously what when we need post-workout, what we need is fast acting carbs. We need carbohydrates we can digest really easily and you know carbs that are just fast acting in general. So rice is perfect for that and cereal is a really easy way of getting it in. I'm gonna add a 100 grams of banana. So we're gonna to add to that 50 grams of whey. This is a chocolate brownie batter flavor, which is really nice. Perform whey is my favorite. It's got some really good flavors. I think double chocolate is very good. Silver milk, Neapolitan ice cream, carrot cake, which is in there is really nice. Um, so yeah, 50 grams. I'll just basically get in protein that digests very easily. So. Yeah, just weigh. Another thing about post-workout nutrition is it's good that you kind of have this when you're calm. Obviously you've been training, you're like in that fight or flight mode, your heart rate's up, you're not in a position to digest food really well. So give yourself a bit of time just to sort of calm down. You know, obviously maybe that's your commute home from the gym or you know, don't basically just don't be eating your post-workout carbs immediately and on the go. So you're just walking out of the gym and you're just munching on a rice crispy square, or you're drinking a protein shake, and you're just, your heart rate's still really high. Wait till you get back into that parasympathetic uh, state, where we're able to digest food. Our resting heart rate comes back down to baseline, and you know we're making the most of the carbs that we're eating because in this meal there is 126 grams of carbs and then the banana as well, so 146 grams of carbs. So I need to make sure that I'm digesting all these carbs as well as possible. Uh, so yeah, just take your time before you have your personal workout meal. Right, so meal number four, this is the second to last meal of the day. So you've got 200 grams of chicken and I've got some bagels. So I'm gonna make a chicken bagel, pretty simple. This is the low calorie Heinz because it tastes, in my opinion, the same. So, <laughs> look at that. Serious chefing. So, meal four. So I like to go for something a little slower digest digesting now at this time because rice is really like, for like surrounding training. I've had my pre, I've had my post, so now just bagels, I love them because they are so easy to get down. It's an easy way to get in high amounts of calories. I mean, my appetite's still in a really good position right now, but it's not at a point where like, I'm very hungry and I need to just go for as voluminous food, like as big foods as possible, like rice, oats. So bagels and chicken is. And I remember literally the day after my show, we went to the Cheesecake Factory and AJ came. AJ was with me, and I remember just saying to him, "Oh my god, bread!" Because they gave us this like toasted bread, and it was just insane. And ever since then, I'm craving bread throughout prep. I just appreciate just bread as much as possible. I think it's just because it's the carviest carb you can get, right? Like I can literally just eat these bagels toasted plain with nothing on and just love it. I don't know if that's a bit sad, but <laughs> I now appreciate it so so much because of how much I was craving 
bread on prep, so I'm gonna enjoy it this and meal. This one's better. This is the sour cream um, and chive. So, one thing I wanted to bring up actually, Ruby's been seeing all these things on TikTok of people putting cornflakes on chicken. It sounds crazy, but if you actually, to be fair, this is really good. She made it for me and I was like, wow, but I just couldn't be bothered to do it today. But if you just get a bag of cornflakes and paprika on the chicken, and then you bash the cornflakes up, you just spread them over to the chicken, layer them up, put it in the air fryer, spray it, it is literally fried chicken. So that would be better in this, to be honest. But yeah, if you want to try it, do it and let me know what you think because I promise you it is so good and it has like, what, 20 calories? It's like amazing. It's like KFC if you're dieting. So try that, but that's not on here today, unfortunately. But maybe next time I'll do it. So, good evening. Still repping the Natural Body Room World Wide Tea, as always. Pete is uh, off playing poker now, so great videography Pete, but now I'm going to film myself. <laughs> uh, so, going to show you guys my last meal of the day, which is, you'll probably guess, oats, always, last meal before bed, has to be bed pre-bed oats. So I'm going to make that now, and yeah, enjoy the last meal. Usually I have the Quaker Jumbo rolled oats, but apparently you've got to make do with these. <laughs> What are you doing? Milo loves my supplement cupboard. He just takes everything out and he wants to go in there every time. <laughs> <laughs> what is that noise? He passed away. That one. Yeah. That one. Ugh, there we go. There we go. Dude, please don't go in there. Oh my god. Alright. So the carrot cake before, wait, really good. Fifty grams. So, oats are cooked, 20 grams of nuts butter, so last meal of the day, let's go. So yeah, this meal is roughly, basically the reason I don't know exact macros is because they're on the sheet, but I just follow the meal plan and I have a couple of alternatives that I'll swap within those meals. So I just follow the meal plan. So, I, and then we just increase food, and then we'll just I'll just follow the meal plan. So, I don't like to think exactly what the numbers are and stuff, but roughly it will be around ninety five grams of carb, thirty grams of fat, and forty grams of protein. And roughly <laughs> the totals for this day are two twenty grams of protein, five hundred carb, and sixty grams of fat. So that's been roughly the <laughs> the food for um a while now and when we increase it like i said we'll just increase you know it'll be like 50 grams of oats added and i'll just follow in the milk plan again with an extra 50 grams of oats i don't like to do too much if it fits your macros tracking macros i really believe like it's best to find the foods that f fit you that you digest well with that digest well sorry and basically just it just makes it easier on my end as well Obviously, I'm quite busy with coaching and stuff, and I would rather just keep it simple, make my meals and eat them, as opposed to like permanently just doing like maths in my head or tracking macros and like figuring out what was what. It's just, I feel like that can really prolong the process a little bit. So yeah, last meal of the day, more slow digesting carbs, oats before bed. That will, you know, hold and, you know, I'll be going into tomorrow holding a lot of fullness. Obviously, when you're dieting, the finer details of, slower burning carbs or faster burning carbs matter a little bit more because you burn through carbohydrates quicker, right? You've got less carbohydrates in your system. When you're bulking, 
that food is just permanently circulating. Glycolysis uptake can take a long while, like a few days. So that food is always just moving around. So what you eat doesn't, uh, it still matters, but the type of carb you eat at wh when and what time isn't gonna change much when food is high. But I still like to keep it, you know, for that purpose, like lower glycemic index carbs before bed, all that stuff. So yeah, gonna enjoy this meal and chill out. And then I will catch you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate all the support. Many more videos to come. Hopefully you enjoyed this full day of eating vlog. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. See you soon.